And that's the motor hub that's making the whining. Yeah, look at that. I'm well happy with that. It hadn't been spinning very fast because it hadn't turned into the wind properly, but because of the how I wanted the design to not have a tail, because I wanted the design to not have a tail, uh, that's how it worked. But now it's turned into the wind, it's really going round, and because it is uh, producing electricity, it's making that humming noise. So, yeah, I'm going to uh, do some testing on it. I don't know how much power exactly it's producing, but. I'll find out, I'll put it up in the next video. Take it easy. Yo, what's up? Another video about what I plan to do with the uh, turbine. I'm just going to show you. I've got it set up through the rectifier and through this meter and to the LED. I'm just going to put the camera down while I uh, give it a crank or two. Get a pen, get a pen. Where's the pen? There. So that's about one and a half RPMs. The meter's only reporting three watts, which I think is a bit off because I think that light needs more than three watts to do what it's doing now. So I guess that's another way you could test it if you wanted. I'm just going to turn the lights off for effect. So yeah, that's that. And I also wanted to show you that I've got it in the vise. You can see with the that has to be the back end of the turbine, and this has to be the front end. Uh, if we go up like that, and that's going to be looking at the front of the turbine, there's going to be a shaft around here. Let me use a random bolt to show you where I mean. There's going to be a shaft coming out here. And this shaft, actually it'll be more like that, this shaft will have to have a gear on it which drives this turbine round. Turbine. I'm already calling it a turbine, you know what I mean. So the original thought I had was to have some kind of drive belt going in here, which I knew wasn't ideal for quite a few reasons. So when I flipped it over, I was very happy to see this, and I was wondering if I will be able to actually connect some kind of gear to this it wouldn't there's not enough room for it to take a complete derailleur and that would be pointless anyway even if i could just get one gear on it then that could work obviously the brake disc will come off unless it makes sense to keep it on there for whatever reason which i can't see and then what will happen with these is these will be connected into a frame so, so that can't move the uh you might be thinking well can't you have it the other way around and fix this and move this Okay, you can't, I can't really think of any way to do that when there's a wire on the back of it because then you'll have the wire spinning around like crazy. So th these will slot in in the same similar way that my uh, other project did. And
and really what I'm going to have to do because I'm serious about going ahead with the project is to butcher the wheel I was looking in here and there's just lots of rusty rusty bolts so I know it sounds pretty brutal but I'm gonna have to get the grinder out and chop the uh, spokes off so that will be the next step that's what it looks like without the brake disc on a couple of bike gears but if you look at the back I think the only way I can connect this is if I keep some of the pedal block which I don't think I can do because it's really in reality it's all about these mountain holes which are 45 44 mil apart so something a cog needs to connect to this somehow and then turn that like so this obviously as i keep saying is going to be fixed in you can't have it any other way because of the wires unless you could knock up some slip ring malarkey but yeah so that's what i've got to do is i've got to suss out how to connect a gear of some kind to that i'm not sure uh you know normal bicycle chain will be any good this is some chain i bought for another one of my projects i'll just grab that i can measure it for you see this stuff's quite beasty it's 15 mil wide without the little pinion things if i may try and measure it with a pinion it's about 16 and a bit that's no, actually 17. so yeah basically Really need to try and if I want to do it, I need to get try and get two sprockets for that. And the shaft on the top of the turbine will have the big sprocket, I think. And this one will have the small sprocket. I don't want to make it too difficult to turn. Uh, problems I've got there is uh, I might have to use washers because I don't want to have to be cutting a perfectly circular hole out this size. So I'll probably use washers to stagger it a bit. And then, yeah, so I've got to try and find a uh, sprocket, sprockets online, whatever. So, as unbelievable and as wantonly destructive as it seems, I'm going to have to despoke this wheel. And I can't really be asked with, uh, <coughs> I can't really be asked with uh, taking all the rusty bolts out. So. I'm just going to hack all the spokes off. I'll put these two blocks of wood here to stop the bottom cables touching the floor. Yeah, where's that grinder? So, unfortunately that needed to be done and it was a bit savage, I'll be honest, but it's for the greater good, it's what he would have wanted, to be turned into something better than he was before.
<clears throat> Feels a fair bit lighter now. Uh, so it's turn. So yeah, that's the uh, motor itself. That will be the back. This will be the front. And it will slot into something that will hold on to the two spindles. Oh, one more little bolt. Wicked. That's it for now. Bye, bye, bye. So these are the bearings I've settled on. I'm going to use both the same size. Not the bearings, sorry, the gear cogs. I'm going to use both the same size. You see the tool, tooth width is 7.2. I've measured that. That's fine. The bore size is 16 millimeters, so that'll just fit over the thread completely. A number of teeth, 26. So it's just going to run similarly from you know 26 to 26. So there's no gearing in it per se. Uh, what I need to do is make it so these are adjust, uh, could be taken off and I can change the uh, cog size which is on there. You, you'll notice the bore size, 16mm, uh, it's, it's all down to that. So you can't have a, six, a big bore with a very small amount of teeth for some reason or else I would have bought another one. So anyway, I'm getting two of those. I've just bought uh, five grams of this resin, uh, five kilos, sorry, and... I've got 100, kilo, 100 uh, grams of hardener coming, this stuff. I'm buying two of these with a 20 millimeter bore size, which is that whole, big hole there. And that's because I've got a meter of 20 millimeter steel round bar, which I'm gonna use for the shaft, for the blades to go on. So they're five pound 55 each, so that's 11 pound for two of them which is pretty good and you'll see they've got the little allen key bit where you can tighten up so the shaft will go from the front to the back of the machine two of these will keep it perfectly straight uh, you can see the little holes there you can either bolt them down or weld them to the frame I'll be doing some drawings at the end of this video so you know what I mean so that's that I'm gonna have to get some of this to make a couple of things which will join the uh, blade holders to the shaft so these are going to be uh, basically some of this is going to be welded onto the blade holder and then uh, when I get it I'll show you how it's going to work. These are the blade, hu blade hubs that I'm going to use. Uh, although I'm hoping to make, these blades are 28 inches and I'm hoping to make a set of the 35 inch ones. So that'll be cool. What I'm going to do with this is on here there's going to be, I'm going to weld a tube on here about an inch tall which will fit over the shaft and then the tube will have to have a hole in that way for which a bolt can go through through the center of the shaft and it can be all tightened up uh, so there's going to be one set on the front and one set on the back so this way is facing front ways is that right <coughs> or have I got that wrong no that's got to be front ways isn't it Anyway, we shall see. Yeah, that's got to be front ways. So yeah, nice. The reason I've gone with a 16 mil bore is that that is 15 mil, that little bit that sticks up. That the width of that is 16 mil, is 15 mil, so the 16 mil will fit just over that and then I'll have to drill six holes in the sprocket to hopefully line up with these and then that's our sprocket bolted on here job done just a bit better look at the chain I've got which is half inch simplex very strong <clears throat> so that's what I'm going to use the tooth width is 7.2 I know that anyway well, I'm showing you that, but yeah, the 
so the width of the teeth on the sprocket will fit in there and it will fit that way so yeah that's cool just found a couple more blade hubs that's a five blade one and that's another three blade one although i think that one's a bit bent but what is bent can be straightened so no big deal i quite like that five blade one i think i might have five blades at the back and three at the front and then theoretically because it causes more drag with the five that would be the best one to have at the back because i'm going to have the uh, shafts kind of offset i'll show you in a drawing so this is a rough drawing i've done of the design and you obviously see that's the blades at the front that's a set of blades at the back which that is not drawn to scale because what's going to happen in a similar way to the fact that the, the tail pipe uh, sorry the uh, tower pipe here is closer to the front end the blades will be over here somewhere okay so it will be offset the front blade will be as close to the front of the frame this is the frame as possible uh, this here that's going to be the, the front bearing which holding the shaft uh, this thing here is depicting the gear sprocket which will be connected to the shaft here somewhere I'm going to try and do it so they're interchangeable but we'll have to see with regards to where this joins on that may have to be at an angle uh, of four degrees which will then cause the turbine to, fa to face up a little bit okay that's just showing you the top of the tower the uh, motor will fit in here and is not shown in the drawing so the, the chain will come from there down to here and go on the front end of the motor so i'm going to do another drawing with that on but that's basically so you can see how it is because it's closer to the front if i was to do that it may tip up a tiny bit anyway because you, you do want it poking up even from the Hugh Piggott thing and I want so the motor would come out a tight of a tiny bit of an angle I'll do another drawing and show you that so this is a bit of a better drawing I think showing it so you'll see the shaft going all the way along the top of the turbine there's the rear bearing just there and there's the front bearing that holds the shaft in place uh, the upper drive sprocket is also on that shaft directly above the sprocket which is on the motor here what i've done i've done this red to show you where the chain's going to go and from the top there's a hole here so the chain can run through these two brackets which will be adjustable uh, will hold the motor perfectly in place uh, and be bolted or secured at either end so they, ca they can't come out uh, the, the bolts attached to this will also sort out the tension and what isn't shown here, sorry I've just done that to show that's the end, the power wires will come out. What's not shown here is the tailpipe which will be somewhere here. I'm not sure whether I've got to angle the tailpipe up a little bit so I, I, didn't, do it, I didn't show you that. Uh, so the front set of blades go on here like so, thank you Sharpie, and the back set of blades go on here like so. And yeah, I'm going to, I'll do, I will do some more drawings showing you it from the front and stuff, but that's basically it. Let's see if we can close up again.